creatives and welcome to Cinema Sunday. If we've never met before, my name is Kim and I'm a creative freelancer with a passion for film and the written word. And if we have met, welcome back. And on today's Cinema Sunday, oh, we're talking Ridley Scott. Let's get started. All right, guys, so much like the other members of my top five directors of all time, Ridley Scott is super detail-oriented and loves to play with light and dark. So if you guys are interested in learning more, you can head on over and I'll put links in the description below to my blog where I've done a full bio as well as a review of one of his movies. But today, we're gonna talk about the five Ridley Scott films I think everyone should see. Let's go ahead and get into this. All right, so my number five choice is Legend. 1985 fantasy starring Tom Cruise, Mia Sara, it has Tim Curry in it, really great film. So the plot is basically a Tom Cruise, a young man, has to stop the, the Prince of Darkness from taking over the world kind of idea. There's unicorns, there's fairies, there's all kinds of fun fantasies. And although this is not one of his more critically acclaimed films, this is one of the funnest films and a little outside of his normal box, I would say. So if you're looking for something that's not quite alien and not quite Blade Runner, but something that's still fantastical, hop into Legend. It is 1985, so maybe a little cheesy, but it's kind of it's kind of a great film. It's 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 a nostalgia piece for me. Check it out. My number five, Legend, 1985. So number four, number four is Hannibal, 2001. Part of it, the choice of this movie is because Ridley Scott did it. The other part is because I love Anthony Hopkins. I just do. I just really do. And then they throw Julianne Moore in there, and well, I mean, who can go wrong with that combo? So, you know, it's the sequel to Silence of the Lambs and so Julianne Moore is reprising the role originally played by Jodie Foster so follows Hannibal Lecter as he you know helps Clarice find another uh, another serial killer. It's a good film. It is a really great film. Sometimes I think overlooked and overshadowed by its predecessor which if you want my honest opinion was a great movie but I I kind of like Hannibal better, and it could be because I like Julianne Moore more than I like Jodie Foster. That could very well be. But check it out, Hannibal 2001. It is an awesome film and one of Ridley's great films. So number three is Kingdom of Heaven 2005. Awesome film. So plot is Blacksmith moves from England to Jerusalem during the Crusades, and it goes from there. The action scenes in this are amazing. The detail, the the use of, of camera and everything, just absolutely astounding. I think sometimes we get so bogged down with looking at, for instance, Ridley Scott's most famous films that we tend to forget that he's done a lot more films than just Blade Runner and Alien, which by the way are number one and number two. I'll let you figure out for a second which one is which. So we get so bogged down and forgetting, and we forget about all these other great films he's done. Check it out. Like once again, my number five was Legend. Number four was Hannibal. Number three was Kingdom of Heaven. And number two, and I'm sure I'm gonna get a little flack from one side of the Scott fans because my number two is Alien 1979. And I know what you're thinking, that's his big movie, that's the movie that should be number one. But for me, as much as I love it, and it is a fantastic film, and really the set design and his attention to the set design and the use of light and dark in this film was what made Alien scary. It just was. If any other director had done this film, I don't think it would have been as successful. And here's why. He came from a set he did set design and things like that so he was very detail oriented he the set was a character and he treated it as such same thing with the monster the monster is a character so he treated it as such and so interweaving all these different layers of characters to create this space epic was amazing and if you've never seen the original aliens please i implore you go Find it, rent it, borrow it, see it, because it is an astounding piece of work, but not my number one. And so my number one, and you guessed it, is Blade Runner. Blade Runner, much like Alien, was so much to do with set design and the feel and the atmosphere built around 
the story that honestly the actors were great by no means am I taking anything away from them but I think the movie was made with the set design and the atmospheric feel once again if anybody else had done this film I don't think that it would have been as much of a hit as it was and it's a st it's amazing and you know it did herald a, 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 re a, a spin-off a sequel but the original much like I feel about Alien, if you have never seen the original Blade Runner, I, I implore you, I beg you, especially if you say you're into film, go and see this film. This buy it, rent it, borrow it, don't care how you see it, but see it. If you see no other two movies from Ridley Scott in your whole life, which I think would be an amazing like mis miscarriage of justice, see Blade Runner see Alien, the first one. So the, guys, that's my top five Ridley Scott films. In the description below, leave me your favorite Ridley Scott film. I'm really interested in seeing what everybody thinks. And let's just start with the discussion below. And guys, I will put links as well in the description below to all of these movies. And please remember these are affiliate links. So thank you ahead of time for supporting the channel. And I think that's it guys. So if you like the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you're digging on Cinema Sunday, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And please remember, I post every day by 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Every day is a different show, but they all have to do with film and the written word. And until next time, guys, safe journeys.